Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn and in today's video I'm going to be making this birthday card featuring the honeycomb background stencil. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with my background and that is using this honeycomb background stencil. I also have a piece of ballet slippers cardstock that I'm placing a piece of rolled up post-it tape behind and that's just going to secure my cardstock to my work surface. Next I'm going to take the largest area of the stencil and I'm going to line that up towards the bottom of my card. I'm going to have it so it's hanging off of a little bit. Once I have that in place, I'm going to hold my stencil down using some washi tape. I also took some post-it tape and I'm going to mask off around it so I don't risk getting any ink on those other areas. The first color I'm going to start with is a bubblegum ink and I'm going to blend this onto the background using a blending brush, making sure to go in a right to left motion and a left to left to right and right to left so that I'm getting the entire area of the stencil. So this is going to give me a tone on tone look with that ballet slippers cardstock. I'm going to take the stencil and I'm going to position it so it's kind of a kitty corner from that last area I just stenciled and I'm going to end up covering the entire background just kind of alternating where that largest honeycomb is. Again I'm going to hold it down with some washi tape and mask off the other portions of the stencil. I'll come in once again with that bubblegum ink and blend that onto the cardstock. So I will continue this throughout the entire piece of cardstock, which is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And one thing I do want you to be mindful of is if you are reusing your post it tape, you have to be careful because sometimes it's going to pick up that excess ink from your stencil. Or your blending brush and that can transfer onto your background so every now and then you might want to switch out your post-it tape now for these two corners i don't really need a lot to hold it down a lot of times it's just kind of masking off one area and holding the stencil down with my hand so after i finish this bottom corner that's going to finish off the main portion of my background but i want to step this up a little bit so i'm going to bring in the stencil again and I'm going to use this one that's up in the top right hand corner and this one's going to add some darker tones to some of those areas. But instead of using the bubblegum ink, which you could do, you could apply a heavier hand of bubblegum ink, I'm going to be using raspberry ink. So once again, cover the entire area of the stencil. I love this tone on tone look and I love changing up the colors for this. So instead of no usually or instead of normally using a yellow for your honeycomb, changing up those colors is really fun. Some of the stamp sets I'm using are a scent with love add-on, really high five, a bug deal, and hive five. So I already had gone through and picked out the images that I wanted to use for the front of my card. I'm placing them on some Expressit cardstock, and I'm going to ink them up in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, which is safe to use with alcohol markers. Now I can start my coloring. So I did stamp out multiple leaves because I want to be able to fill in my branch that I have for my scene. And for this one, I'm using Copic markers. Now I am going to be using a mix of Copic markers and Olo markers. There's just certain shades that I was looking for, which is why I kind of chose between the two marker sets that I have. They just had the color combination that I wanted to use for the front of the card. And with the leaves, I alternated where I had the highlight area because I think that's going to really play well with the scene. Now I'm going to be coloring in the bear. He's going to be holding on to this really cute heart balloon. I really loved the scene that I laid out. It was fairly simple, but instead of having it be all about bees, I'm going to have this really cute bear kind of flying in holding that balloon to say happy birthday. So I thought it was a fun scene. Also fairly simple. For the bear, I did these light browns, starting with the E44, 43, and 42. I did come back in with that E44 and just added some darker areas because I felt like my dark marker kind of got lost. For the heart balloon and also the rest of the hearts, I'm using the R24, R22, and 21. I thought this nice bright red would look really good against my pink background. Another option that I think would look really good is coloring these hearts in maybe a teal color. That would have really popped off of the background. 
So I'll use this color combination for the rest of the heart and also for the cupcake, which I didn't do a ton of shading to because it is pretty small. Then I have my tree branch, which this is from a bug deal stamp set, and I stamped it in the position that it's going to be on my card. It's a lot easier for me to figure out where my shadows are going to go and my highlight areas when I already have it stamped in the position that it's going to be on my card. I used that same brown color combination to fill in the opening for my beehive. Now this is where I brought in my Olo markers. There is this yellow combination that I really love for using on images like this. It's a very warm yellow, kind of has that honeycomb feel. I kind of feel like it has that honeycomb color combination. So I colored in the honeycomb using those yellows and then just finished off with a bright yellow for my bee. And then I'm gonna bring in a very light teal for the wings of my bee and also for my cupcake wrapper. Now, once I have everything colored in, I'm going to line up the coordinating dies, hold them down with a low tack tape and die cut these out. Once everything is die cut out, I'm gonna bring my background back in and I'm going to lay everything out the way I still want it. I just wanna make sure everything fits, see if there's anything else that I need to add to it. Now, one other thing that I'm really addicted to using right now are the fancy scalloped rectangle stackables. I love that eyelet look that goes around it. So I want to die cut out my panel so it's going to fit inside of that scalloped rectangle that I die cut from, uh, I think it was raspberry cardstock. And I found that one of the dies from the small stitched rectangle fit perfectly in the inside. So before I do anything, I like to take my phone and just take a picture of my layout so I know where everything is going to go. Then I'll just take this rectangle die and die cut out my honeycomb background. So again, I brought this over to my Misty and I lined everything back up just like I had arranged it in my picture. So this part of the video, you can pretty much disregard, but I wanted to leave it in. My original thought was to heat emboss my sentiment. I have one at the top and one at the bottom. I thought white embossing would look really pretty on here. So I prepped the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool and I'm stamping the sentiment in the Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. And one of the things I really like to do when white heat embossing. So I stamped that down, sprinkling on the white embossing powder. And this is mistake number one. I did not check to make sure that my background was completely dry. So when I was sprinkling on the white embossing powder, it stuck to my ink blended background. Okay, so I really wanna show you how I just kind of fixed some of these things and I wanna show you how to work through them is really the purpose of this part of the video. So since I had all of that powder on there, I tried brushing it away, that didn't work. So I took it to my garbage and I just brushed off all of that embossing powder. Then I used a heat tool to dry my background. So I wanna make sure that my ink blended background is perfectly dry before I heat emboss. I brought it back over to my stamping tool, did the anti-static powder tool again, stamped the sentiment down in the white pigment ink, sprinkled on the white embossing powder, and I'm going to heat set it. But after heat setting, it didn't look like it was standing out enough for me. I felt like it was getting lost in the background. I tried going over it again with gold embossing powder. That didn't work. So I decided I was going to end up just stamping it on white cardstock and cutting out my sentiment itself. So in the meantime, I'm gonna add some splatters to my background. I have some white paint that I diluted with water and I'm going to splatter onto my background. After I add the splatters, I'm gonna bring my heat tool back in and dry that so that I don't smear my splatters when I start attaching everything. I have a side folding card base that I created from heavyweight white cardstock. I'm adding tape runner to the back of the scalloped rectangle piece, and I'm gonna add that to the front. So I have this really nice kind of thin white border going around that scalloped rectangle. Then I'm gonna take my splattered background, and I am going to be adding foam tape behind this so that it's going to pop it up a little bit and give it a little dimension. Then I'll remove the backing of the foam tape and add this to the front of my project, and this is gonna nestle in perfectly in between those scalloped edges. Now that I have everything put in place, I can start assembling my scene. So I do reference to the picture that I took so I know exactly 
or about where I wanted everything to go. I did trim off a little bit of the branch so it looks like it's coming in more from the side and doesn't have that kind of clean stamped edge. Now some pieces I am adhering directly to the panel. Other pieces I am adding thin white foam squares to. So I always start with the pieces that are furthest in the back, for instance, the branch. Then I added the honeycomb or the hive, popped that up. I also popped up my bear and his cute little balloon that he's going to be riding in on. And then I also have that little cupcake. Now the cupcake I just used liquid glue for. I didn't pop that up. And then I have my leaves, which I did alternate between gluing directly onto the background and adding thin foam squares to. A lot of times if I have a background panel that I used foam tape with, I will add images with thin foam squares so there isn't too much more dimension. So off screen, I had stamped those same sentiments onto white cardstock using the black licorice ink. I also trimmed out a few pieces of white cardstock that were about the same width and I layered it together so that it helps kind of add some stability and pop that up just a little bit. And then I'm placing these right over those messed up embossed areas that I had done. So even though the heat embossing part of the video really wasn't a big help, I do hope that it kind of helps you work through anytime you may run into issues when you've done your heat embossing or stamping onto the front of your card. And in this case, I think it pops off better anyway from the front of the card using the white cardstock. Now I finished off by adding a white gel pen to some of my critters and different images on the card. And then I also added unicorn stickles to the hearts. I hope you enjoyed today's card project and you found some of my mistakes helpful when you go to create your project and maybe have some oopses happen on the front of your card. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. 